All right, everybody, we're going to get started with our third segment. Uh, for those of you who've been in the room the whole time, you know I'm David Burks. I'm the Director of Market Strategy at Expedient. Uh, we own and operate data centers. We have 11 currently. We bought our first data center in 2001. So in the last 15 years, we've expanded to our current state um, almost exclusively through hard work and sales efforts. No outside funding whatsoever. Uh, we did buy two. We did get two through acquisition. And currently, uh, due to the explosive growth of our business, we are um, currently undergoing a $12 million renovation, an expansion of our data center on the North Shore. And that is purely purely based upon demand for um, cloud services and the tailored services that we offer to the IT community. So our next topic is how can technology business management help? To answer that question, we have James Fernandez, who's the area director of Aptio, and Rob Brakeiron, who's the business of IT consultant with KPMG. Welcome, guys. All right, how's the volume? I tend to talk loud. Okay, so my name was cut off there, but I actually think I'm going to start going with Bria. I like it. Um, first, a show of hands uh, from the audience. Uh, who here is, uh, came to the conference to look uh, and learn more about big data or big data type information systems? Kind of half. Uh, who had other agendas? What are the big other agendas out there? Anybody want to volunteer? Please. Uh, connecting it with uh, business intelligence and more importantly, how to manage uh, the data being utilized uh, by the user groups. OK. Anybody else? It's a little bit different topic uh, that we're going to present to you today. If you look at, uh, you go down and kind of read all the others, a lot of people are talking about those things. We're going to talk about big data the cost of doing those innovative things that everybody wants to do. Uh, the first piece of it is how are we going to fund that agenda? So we'll start. Uh, so first, James Fernandez and I uh, go back not too long, but uh, Aptio, he works for a uh, software company out in Seattle uh, that has one of the, the market leader in the solution that we'll kind of talk about today. And then KPMG, we have a suite of services that provide TBM offerings. We'll start. I don't have a clicker. There we go. All right, so a little bit is cut off here, but when we were first talking with uh, your groups, and, and thanks for inviting us to come out and speak, um, you know, when we heard the word tech talk, we thought, oh, it's kind of like TED talk, right? So if you're doing a TED talk, you have to have at least one good quote. So our first one here is, in God we trust, all others must bring data. Has anyone heard that? I love it. Um, the next one is torture the data. You can't see that. Torture the data, and it will confess to anything. And then the third one from a uh, biomedical researcher, hiding with those mounds of data is knowledge that could change the life of a patient or change the world. I would hope that all of us can use big data to that to that extent and be that powerful. So why are we here today? What is TBM? First, let's start with technology business management. It's really a framework to help C, CIO, CXO, CEO, think of C anything, oh, the C-suite, help and understand IT and the impact of the business. OK? I'll add James here to add. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that if you, if you consider the size of the budgets of most IT organizations, you realize that in and of themselves, they're a business. Uh, and as such, you need to be able to manage it better. You need to get, be able to get your arms around it. And I think that this is really where the, the discipline, the framework of TBM has come from, is you know, we want to be able to help leadership understand better where those costs are coming from, where are they going, not necessarily to extract dollars, but to be able to shift dollars, right? And that's sort of the nexus for, for today. We'll talk about some of those high-level use cases today. But really, TBM, uh, you know, we, a lot of people say, say it as simply as you can. How would your 10-year-old right, understand this, right? We help IT leaders understand and manage IT like a business, OK? 
Who are our stakeholders? Can't read that. Uh, the CXOs, right? So it's the CIOs of the world, the CEOs, it's your CMOs, the chief resiliency officer that we had here. It's your business, it's all of your stakeholders, internal and external to your business, okay? What we're gonna talk about today is four specific things. Okay, on the left piece there is, right, in the short term, we can tell you how most people are using this TBM framework, right, and, and how they're, we'll talk about some of the insights and the, the benefits of it. Secondly, we'll talk about how KPMG, how we are using it both internally and externally. Then we'll go to kind of the leading edge, right, a little bit more of a big data tie. How is kind of that most mature organization, how are they using TBM? And then finally, call to action, how can you use TBM? So first we'll start off with how most. James? Yeah, so um, a quote here from, from McKinsey, right, or, or, or at least a, a reference. And the, the core idea is that if you think about an IT budget as a whole and, and uh, a portion of it being a non-discretionary spend or NDS, for the most part it's about 70%. Right, so 70% of, of typical IT budget is non-discretionary spend. McKinsey believes, and we've seen through, uh, through our experience with, with organizations, that anywhere from between 10 to 25% of that uh, can be affected. And I purposely use that word affected because, again, we're not necessarily talking about taking those dollars out. Uh, few organizations are looking to necessarily reduce their IT budget. But what they do want to do is they want to be able to affect those dollars and perhaps shift them from run towards innovate, right? Towards transform and grow. Uh, and, and that's what this discipline is about in, in, in a nutshell, right? If, if we can provide a standard methodology and approach, then the highlights of, of where these dollars are coming from and where they're going really starts to manifest itself. It really starts to become obvious and it becomes defensible, which is the other key part of the, the overall conversation. So, you know, what I wanted to do here was really talk a little bit about some examples, right? So, so if, you, if you take a look at the TBM Council, and that's tbmcouncil.org, it's a nonprofit organization dedicated towards the discipline of TBM, you start to see that there's a fair amount of use cases there. And I would point you to use cases like Nike Technology, right? They're, they're looking to turn to TBM in order to uh, reduce their overall applications by 65%. Overall applications by 65%. That's not trivial, right? And inherent in those is a fair amount of dollars. Uh, I would point you also towards KeyBank, right? That has already found over $20 million in dollars that were just basically sitting there, right? They, 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 were, they weren't being used as effectively as they could be. Um, there's use cases for FedEx, and there's use cases for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now, these are large organizations, uh, and, and I guess I highlight them because of name recognition, but there's organizations from all sorts of different industries and all sorts of different sizes that are, again, taking the core principles of TBM and applying them into their organization so that they can, again, manage business better and then the second part of that is have better conversations with the business. So that's where that's coming from. Anything else you would add, Rob? Uh, no, other than, in, and I'll get to it on uh, two slides from here when we talk about some of the customers we have around the world and a little bit about sizing. Absolutely. We'll speak to that. All right, so the next slide here, this is what, how we use it, right? So. James and I, we don't work for the same company. We have a strategic partnership between Aptio and KPMG. Um, TBM is not something new, right? Organizations have been trying to do these type of things. Let's see if you can bring that in. Nope. Organizations have been trying to do these type of initiatives for years, right? Now there's just a new name for it. Call it IT financial management, call it what you will. TBM has kind of broadened that group of activities and and really brought that larger to include IT service management, right? A lot of your, that's fine. A lot of your enterprise architecture initiatives. Um, it's, so TBM, we saw this trend. Aptio has been around for a couple of years. Um, seven years, James? Seven years. Seven years, they just went public, congratulations. Um, we've really been partners with them the whole time there. And so, Obviously, a large organization, KPMG, we have a footprint around the world. And we're always talking to those CXOs of how do we drive innovation? How do we change? Okay, so we have this TBM practice. There's about 70 of us uh, around the world. 
uh, we do actually your pretty good footprint around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second uh, piece here, I don't know if you can tell what that is, uh, is not only do we have a practice dedicated to doing these things, bringing TBM to organizations, the second piece is we're doing it for ourselves. Right? So TBM at KPMG is a really big deal. Right? Multi-billion dollar business, we are using TBM to drive and fund our own innovation and reallocate those savings to our business. Anything you want to add? No, I, I think that um, it's a shame that you can't see some of the numbers here, but, but really um, it's, you, you start to see how many different areas it affects. Uh, you know, obviously we've been focusing on IT itself, but uh, it quickly starts to expand, you know, the practice of starts to expand to other stakeholders like finance, like project management, uh, and the businesses themselves, right? They, they want, one thing, once there's an exposure, they want to be able to access this, because at the end of the day, IT should be a differentiator for the business. And if we believe that that's true, the more efficiently that it's run, the better the overall business is. Okay. <coughs> kind of go to the end of the piece here of the leading use cases, right? If you think of the maturity journey of people starting a TBM practice, starting to get transparency, essentially they're going to go through and understand, okay, what do we already spend? Where are, we, where are our costs going? Ultimately, too, how do we make it more efficient? And then essentially, how do we sustain that value? There is that maturity curve that we help organizations along, and there's a lot of value along that curve. At the very end of that curve, we start getting to things like big data, okay? Not only reallocating dollars to fund those investments, but how can we use this tool in itself to fund or to help those big data initiatives? So most of the tool will go out and it will crawl and we'll link it up to most of your IT infrastructure. So our most mature clients have 50 or so data sources that it's already cleansing, it's already reporting on. You can know where your good data sits. You know where the bad data sits. You can use the ETL function in this to kind of manage and supervise some of your big data routines. Okay. <laughs> Last part is just a question of you know, how you can use it. All right. So a lot of people are doing things like this. When we are having lunch today, uh, we are getting questions, you know, how how are people going to fund their big data initiatives? So obviously that's partially, if you're not here for that, others are, right? So as you're thinking about all of the cool things that big data offers you, try to figure out how you're going to pay for it and what you're going to do with those savings. And with that, we'll go to questions. Perfect. Questions out there on the framework of the approach? Well, so, so uh, I want to differentiate that. The question was, do we use open source technology? The framework itself is, is an approach, right? It's, think of it as, as, um, as a standardized way for taking the costs that are coming out of the general ledger itself and escalating those up into cost pools, IT towers, uh, service, uh, the services that we provide as IT, the applications that we provide, and then the consumption by, by, by the different consumer groups. So, so, so if you think about it from that perspective of, uh, alone, um, there's no technology involved per se. Now, if the question is directed as to how does Aptio use, uh, you know, what technology does Aptio use in terms of uh, uh, taking that and automating some of that? So we, we use our, our own proprietary purpose-built system. Uh, it's, it's a software as a service offering to, to support this idea of cost transparency, IT planning, optimization, Benchmarking, you know, so, so the, the suite itself. Um, but you, what, we, what I really wanted to focus on was, was, was the approach and the discipline. Yeah. So what you're providing is the analysis. Absolutely. It, exactly. And not I'm not the vendor, so I'll go a little bit further than James is comfortable <laughs> going here. Okay, so to keep there are honest. a lot of people in this space, okay, a lot of competitors that they have. And I, I don't say it lightly, they are the leader in this space. What they have is an inference engine behind that is looking at all these disparate data sources and trying to make connections between them. Sorry. That is not a straight foreign key, primary key relationship, right? There's a lot of data sources that you're linking together. Aptio is a leading tool to help IT organizations stitch these together so you can mince, make sense from a financial perspective and IT service management and ultimately to up to your tier of services and capabilities. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sir? Or do you go 
So you can do it. When I say maturity, it doesn't always necessitate, uh, it do doesn't always speak to time, okay? Most organizations that are doing big data type initiatives are a little more mature in general, okay? But yes, data, good data, quality data, getting reliable, accurate, untimely data, same type of things that you're going to need to drive a program like this. Okay, so the better you have data, the more reliable it is. Those, your two programs should talk and they should intersect. Additional questions? So just a uh, uh, disclaimer, right? As soon as this is fixed, we're going to start all over again. <laughs> so we expect you guys to stay put. <laughs> I think I'm good. If there's any other questions, we'll be here for a while yep. longer. Don't worry about it. I think we're good. Thank you very much.